want you to raise your hand if you think you're a perfectionist. Okay, it's a little blurry, but I can see a few hands. Here are a few qualities that a perfectionist obtains. Keep track of how many you can relate to. Number one, you have an obsession of meeting other people's expectations. Number two, you constantly worry about making a mistake in front of other people. Number three, you don't even begin a project if you doubt your ability to perfect it. Number four, even once you start, you spend an extensive amount of time on it. And number five, you can't even ask for help for the fear that people will render you weak or stupid. There are plenty more criteria, but these are just a few that I've pinpointed. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. You can probably tell that I'm Asian, right? And because of that, you might think I'm hardworking. And it's true, I am, but that's not the point. You might think that it's something in my genes, that it's easier for me to be diligent because of who you think I am. Well, it's not. You see, I'm hardworking, but I suffer for it. It's not easy, it doesn't come naturally, and my suffering is called perfectionism. I know you didn't see that one coming. All right, so that brings up the question, what is perfectionism? According to arts and culture and psychology, it's a broad personality style characterized by a person's concern with striving for perfection and flawlessness, often accompanied by critical self-evaluations. Okay, so that was uselessly complicated. So in other words, it's just a person with a personality that strives for perfection. And at first glance, this seems amazing. Lots of people think that it serves as a great motivator. And, well, I think it's just easy to say that, like everything, being a perfectionist has its ups and downs. And I say this from personal experience. As the world evolves, perfectionism has as well. Constantly finding new ways to adapt, perfect, and of course, what I spend 90% of my day doing, worry about. Studies have shown that perfectionism is on the rise in kids and young adults. By the time they reach their adolescence, 15 to 30% of them have what's called maladaptive perfectionism. This means that they seek in a kind of impossible perfection that brings pain. An even greater amount have a different kind, one which may not inflict immediate pain, but still stands as a risk factor for future mental health issues. This leads these children into battling illnesses like depression and anxiety. But not always will this personality trait appear in the extremes, like in my case. I'll admit, at times, it does serve as a great motivator, but it's also the very thing that holds me back. Ironic, right? Now, many may not know this, nor even believe this, but perfectionism and procrastination come hand in hand. Now, I'm not saying you go and blame your procrastination on perfectionism, because then I'd be in some trouble. But what I am saying is that it's true. Lots of people think, oh no, she can't be a procrastinator, she's a perfectionist. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. There are multiple stories online on how people aren't even able to begin their tasks for the fear that they won't be able to do it. And I've dealt with this on multiple occasions. I procrastinate. I delay. I wait until the very last possible moment so I have no other excuse but to do my assignment. And that's because I don't want to face the possibility of failure which in my eyes would be anything less than perfection. That's why I work hours on the simplest of projects, and I mean every single simple part of it. I'm preparing a slideshow. I'm obsessing over the font, the spacing, the slide design, the color palette, and, well, I think you get it. And even when I'm done, I'm rarely satisfied, even if my work seems absolutely amazing in everyone else's eyes. Okay. So that might have been a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but that's reasonable because there's no such thing as perfect. Especially for people like me, there's always something to improve, therefore always something I must work on. It's an endless loop of imposing unrealistic expectations and endless criticism. And when we can't meet those, we get unnecessarily upset over perceived failure that all in all isn't even our fault. This puts an immense amount of pressure on us. And in addition, not only is our perceived failure not an option, but neither is reaching out, asking for help. Our opinion means a lot to us, it's true, but so does how other people perceive us. I'm in class. I don't understand the lesson. I will not ask my teachers, and I will not ask my friends unless I absolutely have to. That's because I overthink. I genuinely get in my head that, oh, 
They're gonna think I'm stupid. They're gonna think I'm weak. They're gonna think I'm dependent. I'm this and that. And you know what? I don't want it. I can't handle it. I need to at least prove to them because nothing will ever be good enough for me. So any signs of weakness is off the table. At first glance, perfectionism may sound like a good thing. It speaks to motivation, drive, and ambition, but beneath the surface, perfect is a double-edged sword that many of us are forced to handle on a daily basis. Now, I've been trying to come to terms with the idea that I don't have to be perfect. Now, I'm not saying I achieved that because I haven't. It's probably gonna be something I have to tell myself every single day for the rest of my life. But I found that every time just gets a little bit easier to accept. At first, it was just something I would tell myself because I knew I should. I didn't really believe it, nor did I get it. And yeah, the data backed it up, but well, no. There really isn't another excuse other than I'm stubborn. I thought this way my whole life, and it was difficult to alter my perspective. But you know what? I'm not perfect. And neither are you. Nobody is perfect. Machines, that's another story. Machines are perfect. Well, no. When you think about it, only for a little while until they wear down and they need repairing, so not even machines are perfect forever. Okay, I'm rambling, that's not the point. What I was trying to say is, humans aren't meant to be perfect. In fact, that defies the very definition of being human. That's why when we make mistakes, we say, well, I'm only human, right? Right, okay. Well, we're prone to mess up. And when we do, we should think of it as a lesson. Now, I'm not gonna tell you, just stop the self-criticism. It's that easy, just turn it off. Because it's not. In reality, I know, trust me, I've tried. We're always gonna be our biggest critics. Oftentimes, we're not gonna know when we've gone too far, when we've put too much pressure on ourselves, when we self-sabotage to the point where we're out of control. So instead, acknowledge that, yeah, this wasn't perfect. Yeah, there was something to improve. View it as a learning opportunity because there's a fine line between excellence and perfection. And as your mindset slowly starts to change, gradually you'll find yourself being more forgiving towards yourself too. Mel Schwartz once said that we need to remind ourselves that the goal isn't to emulate a machine, but to embrace the imperfection of being human. People need to know both sides of the coin. Perfectionism is like a 20-ton shield that we lug around thinking it'll protect us when in reality it's the very thing that's preventing us from taking flight. This is what Brene Brown had said. And you know what? She's right. Our lives are different. The way we function, process, and act, it all heavily relies on situations that are out of our control. And for those of you like me, reevaluate these standards that you hold yourself to. Help yourself accept the natural state of life, which is imperfect. That way we can participate rather than watch, try rather than quit. Now, I'm not saying that the change is gonna be immediate because it's not, but eventually it will be there. Just remember, we're all only human. Thank you.